1951. What do you think? Was it a good year? Let's take a stroll down memory lane. Do you remember the cars? Here's a 1951 Chevy, a 1951 Ford, a 1951 Cadillac. And how about the price of gasoline? 19 to 27 cents a gallon. Do you remember the price of hamburgers in 1951? The most expensive item on the menu was the triple thick shake, which cost a whopping 20 cents. On the scientific front, mass production of penicillin reaches record highs. And electricity was generated from nuclear power for the first time. Well, it may have been happy days for some, but not for all. How about this one? Julius and Ethel Rosenberg were convicted of passing U.S. nuclear secrets to the Soviet Union. Both are sentenced to death in the United States of America. On the international scene, the North Korean offensive pushes beyond the 38th parallel. Truce negotiations fail. Stalin claims the Soviet Union has the atomic bomb. And in perhaps the most famous civilian military confrontation in the history of the United States, President Harry S. Truman relieves General Douglas MacArthur of command of the U.S. forces in Korea. Well, let's get back to something a bit more fun, like sports. In 1951, the World Series, the New York Yankees won the New York Giants. Also in 1951, it was announced that the 45-year-old Satchel Paige would start the following night against the Washington Senators. In his first game back in the major leagues since 1949, Paige pitched six innings of shutout baseball. His career spanned five decades and culminated with his induction into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. And then, an all-time great center fielder for the New York Yankees, a three-time MVP who made the All-Star Game in every season of his career, a man who won nine World Series with the Yankees, had a 56-game hitting streak and was known for his gracefulness on the field. Joe DiMaggio announces his retirement in 1951. Well, let's move on to the movies. Do you remember Humphrey Bogart and Katherine Hepburn in The African Queen? Oh, no. How'd you like it? Like it? White water, rapid. I never dreamed. I don't blame you for being scared, miss, not one little bit. Ain't no person in their right mind ain't scared of white water. I never dreamed that any mere physical experience could be so stimulating. And how about television shows? I'm sure you all remember this one. <laughs> how does that one door get open? The list goes on and on. However, amid all these exciting and ominous happenings in the year 1951, there was something very special that occurred in a rather obscure little place called Slough House, California. Born to a World War II veteran who had fought in the South Pacific against what was called the Combined Fleet of the Imperial Japanese Navy, and to his wife, a still 17-year-old young woman who had been prepared for just such a man as her veteran husband, was a little boy named after his father, Preston McKay Hanford, and referred to as Tony, Junior, Press, P2, and best of all to him by his father, Honey. So why all these various names? Well, let's start with Tony. 
I'm Preston's older sister by 13 months. My name is Kathy. When I was little, I apparently had a difficult time saying Preston. According to my mom, I called him Pret Tony. And so for many years, Preston was called by family and friends, Tony. I don't remember the exact age, but I do remember the day that mom and dad decided he should be called by his real name. And so from that time on, he was Preston. However, you may still hear from time to time some of the cousins referring to him as Tony. And if you do, now you'll know why. As for the other names, Preston's dad, our dad, was senior. Preston was junior. Junior's son became the third, and the third son became the fourth. And of course, this made for a very happy time for the Hanford family. But I know that the most affectionate name my brother was ever called was that of Honey, but not spoken by anyone else with the same depth of love as from our dad. Preston truly revered and still reveres our father. Though we now have only three of these Prestons among us, Preston McKay Hanford Jr. is the one we are celebrating this evening, and that because this magnificent little boy, born in 1951, is having his 70th birthday. Happy birthday, Press! Okay, so let's move on. Here we are on the 40-acre dairy mom and dad had after World War II. In the background of this picture, you can see the old home and the barren land all around us. All there was there was a few old oak trees and hidden from view, lots of rattlesnakes. It's difficult to see in this picture, but if you look carefully, you will see the original milk barn where Preston and Kurt and I, along with mom and dad, of course, all milked our cows each morning and night. This is the old barn where Preston used to pretend that he and Kurt were great cow buyers. They'd pretend to smoke cigarettes and act like tough guys trying to get the best deal they could on the cows. The first time I walked up on them in their greatness as actors, I was shocked. Was this really my little brother's? Oh, yes, I'm the great pretender. Like I said, we had a small dairy and lots of hay to play in. Notice in all these pictures what a happy fellow Preston is. His great smile and happy eyes have continued with him his whole life. We had a dog with very loose skin. We love that dog. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Now, as you look at this picture, no one would know but us, but the photographer was throwing a ball for us to catch. And having his usual cheery and fun-loving nature, Preston was all for it. Kurt, on the other hand, well, he looks a little shook up, wouldn't you say? I'm all shook up. We were the typical, very happy 1950s family, and believe me, father always knew what was best. Mom would sometimes tell the story of how dad had said, look, honey, don't correct my stories. I'm always right, even if I'm wrong. In addition to running the dairy, dad had many extra jobs over the years. My brother Preston always worked right alongside dad in all these endeavors. And like dad, when a bit older, developed his own businesses and gave employment to many along the way. At about four years old, dad had him sit on this trailer while he pulled it to a different spot on the property. Somehow, Press fell through the boards on the trailer and was barely hanging on, like a little monkey from a tree limb. We were all panicked and exceedingly worried that he might not be able to hold on till dad reached his destination. What if he fell to the ground and got ran over? But dad lovingly yelled back, just hang on tight, honey. Do not let go, just hang on tight. And like a courageous, obedient, and loyal little soldier, Press did hang on. He hung on tightly and made it to safety to all our relief. These were wonderful growing up years. The three of us would often play Superman. We'd put towels on our backs and jump off the fence in the front yard. Look, 
Up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman. We'd also play house. Of course, Preston was always the dad. I was always the mom. And Kurt was always our little boy. Preston would copy dad and say to me, Honey, how much money did we make this week? Of course, we all attended school. Many of you probably don't remember a little one-room schoolhouse in Wilton called Lee School, but that's where we attended for our first years of school. Up in the morning and out to school. The school was also used for what we called our community club. Many from the neighborhood who played instruments like the fiddle, the guitar, the accordion, and such, would gather and everyone would dance and have fun. Preston and the rest of us kids began learning how to dance from our parents at this little school's community club. Let's go to the hot pool. Let's go to the hot pool, baby. Let's go to the hot pool, baby. Let's go to the hot pool. Maybe because he had worked so hard with Dad, who knows, but for whatever reason, Preston developed a command of things at a very young age. For example, we had a horse named Topsy. Topsy was a gentle old mare, but she knew very well when it got right down to it that Kurt and I were afraid of her. Kurt and I would ride Topsy down Dillard Road to the first cross street, Apple Road, but she would not come back home unless we got off and walked her home. But not so with Press. I'm not sure if she just knew he loved her, if he told her off or kicked the heck out of her, but she knew he wasn't afraid of her, and she knew what she had to do when Preston was on her. Preston had a very deep love for Topsy. One day, she was laying down in the field, and to his young eyes, he thought she had died. He was seriously crying and brokenhearted that the horse had died, though she really hadn't. Mom and Dad then took counsel and decided they needed to sell Topsy before she actually did die so as to prevent press from more heartache. A younger horse might be better. Eventually, we did get a younger horse. Stud was his name. Press not only had a great love for horses, but also for our family and for most all people. He understood hard work difficult things, and times. It was as if all the difficulties he endured as a little guy only deepened his compassion and love for people and things. Or maybe he just came to earth with that big heart of his. And speaking of his courage and concern for family members, one day as we were at the Consumnes River swimming with lots of family friends, I saw that my little brother Curtis, about six years old, was in trouble. He had lost his footing and the water was pulling him down. I could see the fear in his eyes. Preston was up on this big rock playing. I shouted, Press, Kurt's in trouble. Remember, Preston is only about seven years old. Preston caught a glimpse of Kurt with the fear in his eyes and jumped right into that flowing water to save him. Now, the only thing Press knew to do was to go down under the water, pull Kurt down, and then push him up to the top so he could get a breath of air. He would push him up and over to the side. Of course, when Press started pulling Kurt down in order to push him up, Kurt wondered what on earth he was doing. In later years, he'd say, I thought you were trying to drown me. But thanks to Press, they both made it safely to shore. This was just another example of how my brother Preston was always there to help the rest of us, even as a little boy. When we did something wrong and wouldn't confess, Dad would tell us he was going to spank all of us unless someone did confess. Press would always confess, even though he hadn't always been the offender. Kurt and I would look at each other in amazement. What courage he has! When Press was eight years old, our little sister Jeannie was born. When Preston was nine years old, he was becoming quite the handsome young man. When Preston was about 11 years old, the family sold the Slough House place and moved to Elk Grove. Here's a picture of all of us just before we left the Wilton Slough House area. After a short stay in Elk Grove, we moved on to some acreage near Bradshaw Road that Dad bought from his friend Boyd Gray. Here, he built another home. 
One day we decided we should name this little road that our house was on, since it had no name. We were among the first there, so together with our neighbors, we decided to name the road Titan after our neighbor's little Chihuahua dog. There used to be some deep ditches along Titan Road, so us kids would put boards over the ditches to make forts underneath. Some of us would build our fort in one spot of the ditch and some of us on another spot. We'd crawl under the wood and dig out the ditch if need be, and that was our fort. Then we would gather up as many rocks as we could and throw them at the enemy. It was all so much fun until one day one of us hit the neighbor girl right on the lip. Wow, we were in trouble. If you knew our dad, you'd know we were in deep trouble. Here's a picture of us all before we moved from this place. Our next move was to Sheldon Road where dad bought more acreage and built two more homes. And of course, Preston was right there helping dad. And by now, Kurt was also out there trying to help also. This is the first house dad built on Sheldon Road. This is the second one he built on Sheldon Road. This is the one that Preston and Kurt are helping with in the previous picture. By now, Press was coming fully into his teen years. You know, motorbikes and girls, but he still loved horses. And he and Kurt were also still milking a few cows each day. It was there on Sheldon Road that Press got a new motorcycle. Wow, he was in hog heaven with this bike. This is not the actual bike, but it gives you the idea. It used to be said, a boy and his dog. Then it went to a boy and his horse. And now it was a boy and his motorbike. But that didn't last too long. I think he decided horses and girls were the best way to go because dad had given Preston strict orders not to go anywhere with that bike while he was gone. So, of course, Mom and Dad left one night, and Preston took off to see a girlfriend on the bike. Dad and Mom came home. Where's Preston? I think I'll just let him tell you the rest of that story. Don't forget to ask him. And while you are at it, ask him about the dead horse they buried late one night. Yeah, that's another great story. On Sheldon Road, Dad bought a beat-up old dump truck so he could begin hauling topsoil and other things to those who needed it. Preston was always helping Dad fix something that went wrong on that truck. And as soon as he was able to get a driver's license, he was the one hauling those loads of dirt or rock to the neighborhood buyers. Preston not only helped Dad, but really took the reins to help Dad and our family. This, of course, is not the actual truck, but it is a very good replica of what that first old truck looked like. While still on Sheldon Road, another fun thing happened. Like I said, I'm a year older than Press, and like I also said, he loved horses. Well, one day, when I had finally reached dating age, 16, my girlfriend Judy and her boyfriend, we called him by his last name, which was Perna. So Judy and Perna, plus Dwayne Hogue and I, were all going on a double date. Perna and Judy were in the front seat, Dwayne was in the back. They all came over to pick me up. Preston was outside on his horse named Stud. After I got into the car, Perna sped out of the driveway, trying to show off, I guess. But Preston was not impressed and was not about to allow his sister to be in a car with a reckless and irresponsible person like Perna. He whipped that horse into a fast gallop and took off for the car. Guns a-blazing. I watched him out the back side window of the car. Perna must have seen him coming and pulled the car over. Then in the unmistakable, shall we say, flowery language, even at that age, of Preston Hanford Jr., he told Perna in no uncertain terms that he was not going to drive that blankety-blank car like that with his sister in it and then respectfully asked that I get out of the car. I loved it that my brother was always looking out for me. So you get the idea. He was a very protective older brother type, not so much a younger brother. 
Somewhere around this time, mom and dad worked out a great deal on some property on the Kasumnas River and Mooney Road with a wonderful friend named Max Siefger and his wife Eunice. The Siefgers were living in the old Mooney place at the end of Mooney Road. Max had bought a huge section of land and was happy when dad said he'd buy half of it. So they split the property between them and dad asked Max if he could dig out some of the dirt for a dollar a yard or a dollar a truckload. I'm not sure. This story keeps getting better as the years go by. Max accepted the deal and dad started digging. I found it hilarious when Eunice tells the story of looking out her window from time to time and saying, there goes Preston again, digging more holes. In fact, there did end up being quite a few pits turned to ponds on the Mooney Road property. Here's a picture of our dear friends, Max and Eunice Seifger today. On the Mooney Road property, dad put in a trailer and built a garage. And then another trailer was added. It was a humble beginning, at least housewise, but many wonderful things happened there. Here are a few pictures of us on the Mooney Road property, Kasumnas River property. Us kids got our first car. Of course, Preston and maybe even Kurt had been driving all kinds of equipment all over the property long before this. But since I turned 16 first and needed the car to go to work, we bought the car and we all drove it. Our family was perhaps like many back then. Everyone worked, put the money in the family pot, and then whoever needed something got it. But it was never anything frivolous. As a matter of fact, when Press first married and his wife outfitted him with several pairs of shoes, he actually felt guilty for a time. He just wasn't used to that style of living. This is a picture of the pickup we had back then. I'm sure Kurt wishes he had it now. We got our first picture with all four of us as adults. Dad and Press, as I've said many times, were always working together. It was either loading, hauling, or dumping dirt, or it was fixing the truck that broke down. Either way, they were pretty much dirty all the time. The business grew. The trucks and workers began to accumulate. Notice in this picture that four of the six are family members. Dad built another house down by the Kasumnas River. But for now, let's get back to the 60s and 70s when Press was coming of age. Preston was, of course, working hand in hand with Dad and Mom on building the business, but like any red-blooded Italian-American, he was also checking out the women. I figure it might have went something like this. Well, when I was a young man and never been kissed, I got to thinking it over how much I had missed. So I got me a girl and I kissed her and then and then Oh lordy, well I kissed her again because she had kisses sweeter than mine But finally one day, maybe just past his teens, he met a woman named Diane Nord. Diane was a beauty and had an adorable little girl named Danielle. Preston was hooked. <laughs> In due time, they were married, Preston adopted Danielle, and eventually they built a new home on Mooney Road. It wasn't too long after this when a new little fellow joined the family, Preston McKay Hanford III. He was the sweetest little guy. I was going to put a picture of him running around outside naked, but then I figured he'd probably prefer this one. So Preston began the rigorous task of being a father to a son. And based upon how he looks in this picture, I'd say he might be having a time of it. Maybe he was singing this song. Mama said there'll be days like this, there'll be days like this, Mama said, Mama said, Mama said. But the children grew and how those hairdos changed, uh-huh. The years passed and much happened. While everyone was managing Hanford Sand and Gravel, Danielle, one of my favorite nieces and one who took after her father in that she was always providing the family with entertainment, grew up and graduated from college and eventually got married to a really great guy named Steve Van Summeren. Preston III followed in his dad's footsteps and as any red-blooded Italian-American would, helping with the business, went about chasing the girls. 
He eventually married an amazing young woman. Her name was Jackie Garms, who never got older than 29 years of age. Just ask her, she'll tell you. How old are you today? I'm 45. Oh my gosh. Getting old. How, are you, how old are you, Preston the fourth? I'm 17. You're 17? Okay, Jackie, are you telling 29. me? 29. <laughs> and in due time, Danielle and Steve gave the family two grandchildren, Zach and Zaya. Zaya was famously called Hollywood by Grandpa Preston. They are both beautiful and talented children for sure. Here's another picture of Zach and Grandpa Preston. And Preston and Jackie gave them two also, Preston IV and Herbie, named after his other grandfather. Thank goodness we didn't have P5. People would have thought we were building a kingdom instead of a family, huh? And again in due time, Grandson Zach blessed the family with a couple of great grandbabies, Ezra and Kiara. Thank you, Zach. They are beautiful. Okay, so let's get back to the rest of Preston's life. It was in about 1981 that Press went on to establish another new business, no longer in partnership with his parents, called Hanford Ready Mix. Hanford Ready Mix turned into a booming business with lots of trucks, lots of employees, and lots of income. But then, as sometimes happens, Preston felt sure he just wasn't cut out to be married. He told me one day, you know, when you are married, you are supposed to do everything in consultation with your wife. You have and raise children together. You talk over how to spend the income, what to do, where to go, just everything. Well, I don't like consulting with anyone else. I just want to do what I want to do. He definitely liked doing things his way, and he truly felt he was a terrible husband. He figured he should never marry again. Diane was probably thinking, If you should lose me, oh yeah, you lose a good thing. And for sure, in many ways, he was losing a good thing. But being the mature and wise people they were, they decided to move forward positively, respectfully, and continue their partnership in Hanford Ready Mix. And so things continued a bit differently. The business stayed lively, and so did Preston. He became quite the wanderer. Oh, and I'm the type of guy who will never settle down. They call me the wanderer. Though Preston did not feel he was cut out to be a husband and basically was planning on staying single, there was another who had a different perspective. Enter Melinda Backer. Her song may have went something like this. He's so fine. And his song may have went something like this. She did finally catch him, but fortunately or unfortunately, depending on your perspective, only for a short time. And again, we were faced with another breakup. Breaking up is hard to do. So Press went on. I'm not sure how he really felt during those years, but life isn't meant to always be easy, right? We are here to make choices and learn and hopefully grow into better people. So how about we move on to some areas that Press has already grown strong in. For example, social skills. He is such a fun-loving person and has had over the years and does have many friends who dearly love him. This picture seems so typical of my brother Preston having fun with friends, just acting kind of goofy. He is such a fun-loving guy, just like when he was little, and he still has that big smile that makes his eyes squint up with so much love. And speaking of friends, two of his closest friends were Ronnie Dunbar and Paul Schroeder, both now passed on. Ronnie had, in my mind, a kindred spirit to my brother Press. He had, like Preston, a heart that was as big as the sky. A couple of times when the Kasumnas River flooded over and the family was in a bad situation, Ronnie Dunbar, with his expansive personality, was there in a flash and somehow gave all of us great courage. Ronnie Dunbar has a son that we all know and love, Mr. Steve Dunbar. 
Steve was great friends with Paul Schroeder, a man who also became a close friend of Preston's. In the late 1990s, Paul was diagnosed with stomach cancer. Press took him to his home until he could get back on his feet. And when he was able to work again, Preston gave him a job at the Hanford Ready Mix plant. That was Preston, and that is Preston. If he is your friend, you have a truly great friend. Unfortunately, in 2002, Paul died of that horrible cancer. The year before he died, Paul was again unable to work. But in Preston's typical style of deep and abiding love and friendship, he continued to pay Paul, out of his own pocket, his full wages so he could support his family. Another talent that Preston has developed is music. He learned from our mom some of the basic chords of music, and then he just took off playing and singing. He loves country western music, but once in a while he'll throw in a ballad or some rock and roll too. Put the music together with love of family and friends and you have a most precious gift. Shall we listen in for a minute? It's that old 97 you must shovel in a little more coal For when we reach that wide old mountain you will see old 97 roll be here all night if we mentioned all his gifts so let's move on the years went by and then came a woman into his life that at first seemed like Preston couldn't live with and yet couldn't seem to live without either her name Melissa Johnson one thing about Preston he knows how to end up with a beautiful woman <laughs> Nothing but the best will do for him. So here's the story. The band at the Brick House on Elk Grove Boulevard had asked Preston from time to time to join them while playing and singing. Apparently, this beautiful woman, Melissa, had seen him. She put the bug in someone's ear one night to invite him over again so she could meet him. That particular night, sleep seemed more enticing than meeting someone new. So, after a few attempts by the other fellow, Melissa finally called him up herself and said, Well, are you coming over here or not? Now, how about that? A strong woman who knew what she wanted and wasn't afraid to go after it. Preston went, and thank goodness he did. After a bit of struggling, as it is with all of us, and as time did tell, the couple made a true bond. But let's back up a bit and add a little more detail to this story. Press took Melissa to his 40 acres in Galt that he had been fixing up. 
This place sits on a large hill that overlooks all the surrounding area, which includes acres and acres of grape vineyards, along with some old oak trees. Press had planted palm trees, all kinds of colorful flowers and beautiful shrubs up on this 40 acre hill. He had carved out one side of the hill to make a cascading walk to various levels. He had built a home and poured an exceedingly long concrete road that winds up around the hill to that home. He built block walls and put in lots of lawns that he keeps very nicely manicured. He was and is always improving his place and it was and is a gorgeous place, a virtual paradise. The first time Melissa saw it, her first words were, you need to grow grapes here, it's perfect. Preston with his entrepreneurial spirit and knowing of Melissa's entrepreneurial spirit also, wanted to find a business that he could get Melissa into. Since Melissa has, like Preston, many talents, there seemed to be a lot of choices. But knowing Melissa and knowing her first words, they teamed up and together created Hanford Ranch Winery, a venue for weddings. They were very happy about their new creation. So let's learn a bit more about Melissa before we move on. Melissa was born in El Paso, Texas. Out in the West Texas town of El Paso. And as stated, has a multiplicity of talents. One of which is that she is fluent in Spanish. And if I do say so myself, she is a delight to be around. She brought with her two beautiful daughters, Jamie, Christine, and Nicole, Elizabeth. And like Preston, had gone through some difficult times prior to meeting him, and like Preston, has a very deep love for family. Now, I honestly don't have any idea if Press felt this way, but it makes this presentation kind of fun to say it. So I'll just pretend and say this. Press was getting a little older, and he might have been thinking... It's now or never. But with Melissa in his life, it seemed his tune kind of changed to... Maybe the wisdom and maturity that both Press and Melissa had gained through their struggles with and without each other had brought them to a place where they knew there would either have to be a lot of give and take or maybe they would just have to decide what they really wanted to do. This music clip is meant to go both ways. After all, it was up to both of them. I'm leaving it all up to you. You decide what you gonna do. Well, they finally did make up their minds and in due time, they were married at their very own place of business, Hanford Ranch Winery. Not only was it an exceedingly beautiful wedding, but I think there were more people there than the Queen of England had at her wedding. Okay, that's a bit of a stretch, but Melissa and Preston had a smashingly successful wedding. Well, so far at least, such was the life of my brother Preston, minus a few things here and there, I'm quite sure. But out of this last love affair with Melissa had come not only a beautiful companion and wife, but also another quite successful business adventure. Now, somewhere along the line, Melissa wanted to honor Preston with something very special. She knew that Preston's grandson, Zach, was a great painter. So she gave Zach a snapshot picture she liked of Preston and asked him if he would paint it for his grandpa. And Zach did exactly that. It was absolutely magnificent. Thanks to Melissa's request, Zach captured the outer essence of Preston McKay Hanford Jr. perfectly with this picture. And not only that, but Melissa went on to have this painting put on all the bottles of wine, which of course they sell at all those beautiful weddings they put on. Preston and Melissa were working well together on this new venture. And now grandson Zach had added a delightful trademark that I'm sure will remain with the business forever. This is a song that speaks about many things and I'm sure there are many interpretations that can be made of it. 
but I would like to read just a few lines because it just seems to fit in many ways the story of Preston and Melissa. Crossroads seem to come and go, yeah. The gypsy flies from coast to coast, knowing many, loving none, bearing sorrow, having fun. But back home, he'll always run to sweet Melissa. Again, the mornings come, again he's on the run, sunbeams shining through his hair, appearing not to have a care. Crossroads, will you ever let him go? Will you hide the dead man's ghost? Or will he lie beneath the clay? Or will his spirit float away? I know that he won't stay without Melissa. Yes, I know that he won't stay without Melissa. Well, tonight we celebrate the life of Preston McKay Hanford Jr. And rolling back over time, we see that Press never lost his big smile and the light that shines through his loving eyes. These were gifts he gave to everyone he knew. He passed down to his son, P3, the entrepreneurial spirit, his love of music, trucks, cowboy hats, and family life. He never lost his love for singing country western music. His love of cowboy hats, although I have seen him modify his hat a bit in the last few years. He never lost his love of horses, cows, and ranching, though as the years have passed, it does get a bit more difficult. Notice how it went from doing the actual branding to staying on the horse to, oh well, let's just talk and watch. He's never lost his love for the brother he saved when just a little guy, and he never will either. He never lost the love and respect he had for his sister Kathy, and I will never lose my love and respect for my brother Preston either. And though there have been some great misunderstandings, shall we say, he never lost his love for his sister Jeannie either. Yes, Preston loves his entire family and always will. This family and all the other families he has. But I would have to say there is one love that excels all others for him. The love he has for his father, Preston McKay Hanford Sr. He for sure never lost that love and he never will either. And if we know where we come from, why we're here, and where we're going, we'll also know that there's only two things we can take with us when we leave this world. Knowledge that we have gained and the relationships that we have made. Like we have discussed before, if we learn to keep all the laws that pertain to it, families can be forever. So now to close this presentation off, I would like to play the song that reflects my feelings, and I'm sure all of yours also, for my brother, Preston McKay Hanford, Jr.
Just you.